Hey everyone and welcome back to another Legion video. Today I'm actually pretty damn excited to bring you a feature that we didn't really know was going to be a thing until the alpha actually dropped, and that is Burning Legion invasion sites. So I've seen a few of them around the place, and the zone that has by far the most of them is Westfall for some reason or another. I did actually see one down in uh, in Westfall a little bit earlier though. So what the hell are these? That's a very good question. It's hard to know at this stage because a lot of the mechanics that are actually in relation to them don't appear to be implemented yet. Now one little point of interest here is that these people are all dead. This seems to be a little mini event because I actually completed it earlier. Basically, waves of demons would attack a bunch of soldiers who were standing beside these chests and um, I killed all the demons and I was able to open the chests afterwards, but unfortunately, the loot wasn't implemented yet. Anyway, let's have a look at the map. So, looking at the map, you can see loads of different icons and you've got a few different types. So, there's this one here, which is right beside my character. They are small events, right? Small things. So you can see there's an Illidari camp um, where I'm facing right now. There is a small invasion site beside um, that flight point there in Welgar's Retreat. And then there are some slightly more major things going on. So I'm just going to head over uh, to the north to Swift Gear Station, which is over here. This actually illustrates a really, really cool thing. These NPCs are all dead. And these are quest NPCs. I don't believe that this is phased in such a way that it only affects max level characters. I think this quite literally is the Burning Legion invading the world and destroying our stuff. You can even see they've went to the detail of, you know, setting things on fire, actually doing some stuff to make it make sense. And uh, yeah, they scatter NPCs around the place. There are a few data mine quests that I've seen which involve just killing these enemies, but again, we need to see what the full system is going to be like. So as cool as this is, let's head over to the um, to the east here, and we've got a, a few different um, a few different events, and then we've got this right in the middle of my map here, the Legion Citadel, which is probably the last thing I'll show you in this video because it's pretty damn big and pretty impressive. <clears throat> So going down here, the first thing you realize is that there's these unearthed relics. Um, I don't actually know what happens if I click on them. Apparently, not a great deal. Oh, wait, no. So um, I get a fell rune barrier. Very nice. Now, I've also noticed that some of the mobs actually drop um, drop items. So I've got a shadow stone, which will make me invisible and untargetable, and a fell stone, which will give my attacks a, a chance to proc fell effects. We've got this NPC here, fell devourer or something. She has 6 million health, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, with those buffs, we'll be able to take her out. So let's have a look. I'm going to run here and uh, I'll try to fight her. There is, of course, a very good chance that she will just flat out kill me, which, you know, it would be unfortunate, but at least you get something to watch, right? As far as HP goes, she is actually dying quite convincingly. I'm not really noticing... Actually, no, I'm definitely noticing the effects of those fell buffs that I've got. Um, she's at below half health currently. Um, unfortunately, though, I'm uh, kind of messed up my mongoose bites. I'm just going to let that fully recharge. I really should have used Snake Hunter there to try to um, to actually maintain them. But it doesn't particularly matter because she is completely dead. And I got some tangled netting. Wonderful. But that's just not an example. You'll get some slightly more powerful rare mobs scattered about the place. Moving down here, we've got a small invasion site. So we've got this guy, the Dread Knight who is roaming around the place. Again, you can see killing NPCs and interacting with the world. Seriously, if this was just a static face thing, it would be so much less effective. But since it's affecting the actual base world, I think it is uh, vastly more interesting and more effective. Even if that doesn't lead to the biggest change in actual game mechanics, just the fact that it's a thing that's actually happening in the same, you know, uninstanced world is, I think, really, really good. So we're going to go uh, and continue on a little journey here and find Nether Flame, who appears to be this NPC here. Um, Aura Flame, 20% uh, chance to inflict fire damage to enemies with 6 million health. We've also got a whole bunch of um, Infernals. Let's try to kill this guy. It looks like uh, maybe he's killed an NPC camp or something. Again, I actually do seem to be seeing um, pretty great benefit to everything. There's this thing here, Fell Sunder, reduces his armor by 25% and gives him, uh, or causes him to take fire damage every second. That appears to be giving me a, a lot of deeps. It's obviously quite a good thing for me. Um, and that's actually just him uh, pretty much dead. Let's see, did we get any loot? No. Doesn't look like these guys are going to be dropping loot for us. Unfortunately, we did pull a um, Fell Rift Breaker, but uh, <laughs> not really an issue. 
Okay, and that Rift Breaker actually dropped nothing. It does completely seem like loot just isn't really implemented yet. Anyway, we're going to head to the north here, and mainly because it's that town, I think it's Don Baldar or something, I remember doing quests there all the way back in the day, and my one of my very first characters, which was a dwarf hunter, um, after my human warrior, yes, human warrior is very generic, but at least it wasn't a night elf hunter. So, if I go in here, what you'll notice is, oh, this, um, Anvil Mark guy. Oh no, he's just covering Twilight people. I actually haven't been here since... Wrath the Lit- or Sins at Cataclysm. And wow, it looks like they just filled it with Twilight people, because that's just how they designed Cataclysm. Rather unfortunate. What do we get here? So, some, uh, bats hovering overhead, but unfortunately, the town itself hasn't really been, um, destroyed. I know they had some lore going on with the Dark Irons, but seriously, I thought it was far more fun when there was a- a civil war going on with, uh, with all the different dwarves. Yeah, so that's not particularly interesting. We're gonna head over here to- now, this is marked as a Legion Citadel, the one that I'm heading towards now, but it's got a different icon to the thing down here, which is also marked as a Legion Citadel. Also, that looks like one of the symbols from Diablo 3, and indeed, I just saw the news that there's actually treasure hunter NPCs um, in places in, in Legion, in, in the Broken Isles. Yeah, certainly they're going for the whole Diablo expansion thing, aren't they? As far as these NPCs go, we've got like, you know, 400k health. Now that would be tuned to be extremely killable for a character of my level, which right now is 101. And that does beg the question, is this a bit of main Legion content, or is this them testing an element of the, um, the actual expansion's uh, launch content? Basically, they have said that the launch period for this expansion is going to involve, you know, the largest Burning Legion invasion ever, and that the Burning Legion uh, forces are going to be showing up in all of the various zones. As much as it is definitely cool having that as a part of the, the you know, the pre-launch experience, and as much as having things which are unique to the pre-launch experience, I think are very important to make that exciting, and something that's really not, uh, not something you want to miss, I would like it if there was some form of um, permanent threat to the rest of the world after the launch of Legion, um, you know, persisting perhaps throughout the entire expansion. And I would also like events like this to be happening, but not necessarily with the Burning Legion, you know, bandits attacking a part of, you know, a part of the world, just stuff like that. To make things feel a little bit more dynamic and MMO-ish. Right now, though, there's not a particular great deal to do here. There's no real mechanics. These are just a bunch of raw mobs which don't particularly do anything. I'm going to continue going and um, showing you all the different uh, guys that are up here, though. This is actually kind of nifty. You can see an ancient protector and um, a whole bunch of night elf NPCs trying to defend this base. I think this is... Yeah, this is actually one of the quest hubs. Again, it's so much more effective when instead of just being, a, you know, some random thing they slot into the world, no, they actually make it matter. So, you know, if you're a low-level character, imagine this was a permanent part of the game during Legion, or just stuff like this was always going on. You're a low-level character, and then this big, scary thing happens, and maybe it denies you a quest, uh, you know, a quest something, but remember Stitches back in some past parts of the game? When Stitches were, like, genuinely a pretty creepy thing to have happen when you were questing in Darkshire? Well, maybe stuff like that could happen again. Maybe they're going to, I suppose, just make it feel like more of a world. Also, rather interestingly, we see a whole bunch of dragonkin fighting here. Don't really know what's going on with that. I actually just noticed on the map here, another Legion Citadel just appeared. Basically, objectives have been phasing in and out while I've been doing this video, and even in the time that I spent in this zone before the video. So we've got uh, this thing on the map here, which is an abyssal monstrosity with 8 million health, so a really, really, really big inferno. I just want to point out, um, and because I'm doing a lot of work um, with, uh, you know, the games company that I'm co-running with a friend of mine, and we've been working out an art asset pipeline, uh, really great appreciation for the way that they've done the shading on um, that sort of stone uh, effect there. Really cool game art. Anyway, let's continue with our merry little journey. We're going to head over here to Mindbender Alazor. I actually just go, uh, yeah, I'm just looking here. We've got loads of these Ebon Slave Hunters who are all uh, ranked up. See, demonic influence under the influence of the Legion. I wonder if that means that um, certain parts of this Legion invasion are going to turn the native threats of, of Azeroth um, well, into Legion threats that are relevant to this expansion. I think that would be a really, uh, a pretty decent way of getting away with it under the lore. Anyway, let's kill this Mindbender person and see what the hell's going on. Looks like actually some of my buffs have ran out, but I don't actually know. I do actually, yeah, I've got, uh, got one of those items, so she shouldn't, she shouldn't really last for that much longer, honestly. 
Of course, being a hunter, I can always just exhilaration, and being a drain eye, I can um, I can use gifted arrow. So the self healing is actually pretty good. It's worth clarifying though, exhilaration is a SV thing, I believe. So we've got an invader's cache. It's currently untextured, but it. <laughs> oh boy, timeless mail bracers! Holy f fucking hell, we got a burden of eternity. Tell you what, that is, um... That bodes very well for our luck going uh, going throughout Legion. Did the NPC drop anything? No, of course not. We just got some more tangled netting. Fantastic, very exciting. Anyway, let's head back and we're going to check out whatever the hell these things are. They've got a different icon on the map, so I assume they're special in some manner. So next we've got this place down here as Legion Citadel. First thing that I've noticed is we've got a moon well in the middle and a bunch of Ironforge Griffin Riders up at the top. What does that uh, suggest to us? Well, it would suggest that we're going to be having, like, native forces from the, the various different cities and things of Azeroth and perhaps fighting. We've got some Ironforge Guards here that are level 100, only with 300k health, though. But that 300k health, uh, that sort of suggests that rather than being NPCs that are designed to protect lobbies and kill, you know, kill, like, ganking players or something like that, that they're actually designed to be pretty killable by enemies. Another point that I would like to make is it really sucks when Blizzard just has NPCs with static amounts of health that are fighting each other. That never works. It's far cooler when NPCs fight each other and actually die. That kind of sells the fantasy. Not really too sure what else to say about this. They've basically just plonked this big old monstrosity here and, uh, yeah, put a bunch of NPCs around. We, oh, we have, we've got another invader's cache. Let's see if we'll get another burden of eternity. Obviously, our priorities are real. Oh, what's this? A nether focus. So just clicked on that. And, uh, absolutely cock all has happened. Never mind then. Let's have a look at this invader's cache. And once again, we. Oh, Burn of Eternity. Um, you know what? Our, our luck is. Um, our luck is strong today. Is there anything going on inside this citadel, though? There isn't really a way in right now. I can't just, like, run through any of this stuff. And it doesn't seem like there's any, like, obvious, you know. Oh, wait. Never mind. Here's the way in. And it's completely empty. Fantastic. That's just stuff the Blizzard doesn't have done, I assume. Well, with that checked out, I'm just going to go um, straight ahead here to this small invasion site, and after that, we will check out this Legion Citadel, which is actually very close to Menethil Harbor. All right, this is uh, this is actually pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't miss out on this. So we've got this guy here, Subjugator Valarinus or Valar blah blah, blah something demon name, and a whole bunch of guys fighting. Who are they fighting? Well, they appear to be fighting the Dragon Maw Orcs. That's rather rather cool. Don't think it's going to really turn out too well for the Dragon Maws, if I'm completely honest. Seems like some of them are under demonic influence, so maybe, yeah, it's these Aradar Mindbenders. They seem to uh, switch the allegiance of some mobs around. This guy here, Gofax Angerfang. Is he an orc? Are you an orc? What are you? Uh, yeah, you're an orc. Interesting. Let's, uh, let's go kill this Nethrazine guy and see what's up with him. Never mind, appears to be in a magical shield that I can't actually attack through. Well, with that investigated, back on our way to Manifield Harbor. Actually, I just flew over the investigation site and this popped up on my map, Legion Relic Hunters. And we also, we I think we have an Illidari site around here. Yeah, an Illidari camp, so we'll need to check that out as well. Perhaps these blue things only, like, you only see them when you're near them or something? I, I don't know what's up. But, what we do know is... Fellblade Slayers here, and you see those runes? And they're the same runes that we actually gathered last time, which gave that buff. They appear to be lying around here as well. And again, if you need some Burdens of Eternity, well, this guy here, Koringus Fell, he's, he's got you, he's got the hook up for you. Um, I'm actually going to go in, kill this NPC, and grab one of these, uh, grab one of these buffs, because, you know what, they come in pretty damn handy. Only 600k health, so an exceedingly simple NPC to kill. Well, with them dead, let's have a look and see if this gives us anything different. Oh, chance when hit to gain an absorb shield. Alright, so these basically give you a different effect every time. That's pretty cool. This one just... Oh, wait, no, that's just the absorb barrier pie. Alright, well, nice to see some different buffs going on. And we do see here, interactive um, object callout on the map. Now, that is just something that Blizzard will, um, you know, will have implemented for te uh, testing reasons. Um, it'll be some sort of object, and this time it is a Dwarven Mortar. Alright, what are you? Have a go with the mortar, I'll spot for you. Oh shit! We gotta mortar the crap out of stuff! Yes! Ha! Huh. Oh. But only once, and it bugged out. Well, that's unfortunate. But, hey, it's a pretty cute idea. 
Let's continue on. We've got that Illidari camp. I uh, saw some movement uh, the north of my map there. Let's see, that's the small invasion site that we're already at. But here is the Illidari camp. Of course, the Illidari are now our friends, apparently. Um, or at least they're marked as green. So we've got this guy, Korash something. We'll have a chat with him and see if he's saying anything. My blades thirst for Legion blood. Do you know this thirst? Do you desire the blah, 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 blah? Yeah, just them, um, you know, general angsty, uh, angsty demon hunter stuff. Basically, yeah, just a, a small little camp. I imagine this will look better over time. Imprisoned Imp. Maybe they're going to be attacked by demons at some point. That's essentially what's going on there. Let's finally move on to this. And I will check out Menethil Harbor just uh, so we can, you know, see what's going on. See if it's actually being attacked in any way. Again, a bunch of NPCs. We have got a Dread Protector. This person here, Nethercall or something, may as well kill her. Why? Because she's got a name. Uh, yeah, brilliant. So, uh... I'll just kill her and we'll probably just clip back whenever she's dead. Well, she's very nearly dead, and I've actually had rather excellent luck with my mongoose bites. I mean, seriously, they have been procking like a motherfucker, such that I've been at six stacks of the mongoose buff for, like, half of that fight. And, oh, wow, yeah, deep sea starfish. Now, that's pretty rare, right? Deep sea, like... Deep, right? Deep and in the sea. And what happens when you go to the deep sea? You get fatigue and you're dead. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's totally worth it. Again, though, loads of burns of eternity. I cannot wait to use these guys. In fact, you know, s sell price for five gold? Maybe. Maybe is a new gold farming method. Yeah, I didn't think of that, did you? Anyhow, let's have a look at uh, Menethil Harbor, see if any whack shit's going on there. And uh, I suppose maybe I'll hit up a few zones and give you any highlights, but that is pretty much it for the main content of this video. I just want to point out here, right? Look, Blizzard, I know the Cataclysm was really cool, and uh, destroying all this stuff was all, you know, thematic at the time. But seriously, this town has been submerged for five years now. I gotta wonder if they should, um, I just try to f maybe phase some of this shit so that it's not completely broken? I don't know, it's, uh, Sometimes it's just a little bit immersion breaking, honestly. Ah, yeah, so we actually see that the very front of Manaville is under attack by demons. Whether they will be able to push in and, you know, wreck the middle of the town, I don't know. I certainly hope so, though. I think that would be extremely cool. And I guess I'll just do my kind of finishing monologue at the end here to give you my thoughts on this system. Well, my thoughts on this system are completely null and void because we don't actually know what the full system's like yet. I shouldn't have said that. What are my thoughts on this as an idea? The idea of the Legion attacking things. I think it is absolutely brilliant. In fact, I think it could be one of the best ideas that goes into the game overall. And why do I think that? Well... It uh, brings a bit of world into the world. That's always very nice. And it means that at whatever level this is relevant, rather than you just playing the current patch of World of Warcraft, you actually get to go into these zones. Look, I have not flown around the wetlands in years. I have never had a reason to. In fact, a lot of, uh, a lot of the cataclysm changes to this zone were brand new to me because I just had no idea that they were a thing because I've never had a reason to go here. Systems like this could be great. Now, my concern is that this is going to pop up for two or three weeks, you know, be a thing in the Legion launch, and then never be seen again. I think that would be really unfortunate. Now, I could understand Blizzard saying, well, look, guys, it's, uh, you know, if we implement this system, it's, you know, just going to, like, hurt leveling or something like that. Well, you know what? I think consequences are really good. And when something happens to the, like, when something happens in the world which inconveniences a character, um, I think that's actually something that can be really good. So as an example, right, you know, you're doing something in real life, an inconvenience happens, but you're a badass and you overcome it. That feels good when you finally ac accomplish your task. Maybe you just get relief. Um, but it's similar to how if you were going to turn your quests in to Darkshire, right? But Stitches was attacking Darkshire. That was an event, that was something that you remembered. And yes, it was inconvenient, but it was also really cool, and it was the kind of thing that you would expect to happen in a world that's a bit more living and a bit more breathing. Stuff like that, I think, is really important, and it's one of the things that Blizzard have really missed out on. This is called World of Warcraft, yet they've done a pretty pants job of making it, uh, well, a world outside of the most current expansion. As far as the systemic way of doing this stuff, well, 
you could make it pretty similar to the adventure mode stuff in Diablo 3, where it's just like, yo, the Legion are invading Azeroth, uh, go do, you know, X amount of objectives, you can do them in any zone you want, just head out there and do stuff, and perhaps while you're in those zones, you'll have special things happen. Um, you know, like random events, things that could proc to change up the experience and make it feel a little bit more different. That's one way of doing it. Um, you could just do it via daily quest, via normal quest, whatever. Perhaps the more, um, the more spontaneous that stuff is, the better. I would like it if they would give you a fixed enough reason to just go back to the old world in general, but then really make it so that the old world um, has stuff that sort of spontaneously happens in it, which can really change up the gameplay for you. I like the idea of somebody going to, say, defend the wetlands, but then being there for two hours because a crazy-ass, like, invasion event spawned, which, um, you know, led to Menethil Harbor being somewhere that, where you needed to, uh, to defend for a cool reward at the end. Just, you know, stuff that brings back those classic MMO feelings of everybody banding together to do something in the world. And of course, I wouldn't just want this to be a thing for only Legion. I would want this to be something that Blizzard would do a little bit more often. Now, how could that be done exactly? Like, I'm not 100% sure, but if you wanted to do it in a simple enough way, they could expand out some of their scaling tech and just implement it with, uh, you know, with that. So, stuff scales... But you could have, you know, a Defias Brotherhood large-scale attack just happen onto Sentinel Hill, and that would perhaps draw players from across the world over to Sentinel Hill to have a big event there. Maybe you could have a bunch of whatever attacking Stormwind. Or he's attacking the front gates. Little things like that which just sort of consistently, constantly happen in the world, which make it feel like there's things going on. I just can't um, overstate how much I think having elements like that is going to be really, or could be really, really good for the game and create just some elements of gameplay that I personally would really enjoy. As much as I really like logging in and doing a few dungeons, it very much feels like I'm logging in, you know, I'm opening a menu, I'm going to a system, rather than I'm logging in and the game is grabbing me and taking me on an adventure. Now, a lot of those are big words, right? Um, you know, big lofty goals, things which sound really cool on paper. We don't know whether this is going to happen, and this is an alpha, and we don't even know the full extent of this system, so that's just me kind of spitballing. That's what I like to see from a system like this, and suffice to say, my interest is extremely peaked. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.